Hey guys, welcome back. I figured I'd do a little intro to my June garden walk. Uh, I'm still gonna kind of walk you guys through, be a little less on the face, but I wanted to tell you, I'm going to also stitch in, I've been trying this month to go out and see which blooms are nice, when they're nice, because we're in that time of year where you're getting the late spring, early summer transition. So it's a little bit extra green, but there are things that are starting to bloom or just went out of bloom. So I'm trying to catch them when they're at their peak. So not everything is at peak at the same time. So hopefully you guys enjoy it. Come walk through the garden with me. So first is our front bed. I am basically just keeping it at a half. I know earlier in the season I wasn't sure if I was going to extend it. I've decided that I'm just going to work with it as it is. It's kind of a nice bed and I let the grass continue to grow because when I kind of pull it, it mats down into a compost or a mulch. So it protects this area from drying out too much because being this devil strip, it is got really crappy soil and it dries out really quickly so by having compost mulch and then constantly clipping the grass and kind of putting it in between the plants i think is helping retain the water in this area so my iris did bloom in here i think you guys saw that in the last walk my lilies are actually just about to go got my daisies popping up uh lavender is just getting started my time is looking really good here too actually we've got some blooms on there remember i thought those were foxglove and i think i said hey i think they're petunias they were definitely petunia uh i think this is a cone flower uh rubecchia yeah. so he i chopped him by accident but he grew right back i knew it would happen and then i've got some little snapdragons in here I've got my cosmos that have already started blooming. So I'm gonna pinch those and they'll just keep going like crazy all summer. These guys are really great performers and I love how wispy they are. So if you like a wispy plant that will bloom its head off, I would def definitely recommend cosmos. They come all kinds of colors. Like I said, my Little daisies are about to pop open. There's actually some on this one right here. We have got some more Snapdragon. And I just, I don't know if the Snapdragon was meant to be tall, but it's all short, which is fine by me. And it's all red and variations of red and yellow. So that's really cool that you never know what you're getting with this pollination. So not the cleanest bed but it is just what the wild does so I'm just letting it do its thing there's my sedum blooming cute little yellows and this is where I just stacked <laughs> the, the uh, petunia and snap together I just think the snapdragon is such a pretty pop of color in here and then again my coneflower thyme and lavender that repeats itself not too bad. I think it's looking lush and it's just a nice backdrop. You know, everyone else might be a little bit boring, but I, I really like it. <laughs> and I think it looks great from the road. Let's see if I can show you without getting run over here. area i think in my last video the still be was still in its original spot and i said it needed to come out so i did move it and even now they're far too close but he's away from the house and he can now encompass all this area it's going to take him a few years but he's growing and then my little bleeding heart i mentioned they were kind of claustrophobic by the tree in the backyard so i went ahead and moved them He's here and I put the other ones around the way and he seems to like it okay. This area here doesn't get very much sun at all. It's mostly shade, nice bright shade, but that will still be so pretty. 
My lace cap is just starting to bloom, but she is full, full, full. I might have mentioned to you guys, I battle the little caterpillars that fold these leaves in and I either unfold them or I'll pick them off and I'll discard them so that they can't eat my buds because what happens is they fold the leaves over and they tend to fold them over on top of the buds so they can eat the buds. So if you keep on top of it, you won't lose too many. Otherwise, you might notice that your plant doesn't bloom very well. Could be because you've got those little caterpillars. But she is just full of bloom. I was just talking about it. Look. Stitched together. So this is kind of an awkward situation, but what I do is just pull it off and discard it so that he can't come out and start munching on the plant. And here is the original OG. This is the first bed I really took on from when I moved in in 2019. I don't think I started planting until 2020. So this would be the fourth growing season, I think. But I've got a lot of stuff in here, guys. Like I said, this is that time of year where everything's a bit green because we're going in and out of different blooms. So I just picked up these ones from uh, Martin's and they were on sale for like two bucks a piece. So I'm going to put those probably in another garden. I don't think I showed you guys this yet, but I picked up a yarrow. So pretty. And I put some of my dahlias in the garden just to let them kind of go. So this is where I get to check the garden. And for instance, they're far too close. I need to move. <laughs> you know, when they're small, you don't think, oh, they're going to take up that much space. And then they're literally like fighting for the area. And then my salvia is doing fantastic. Through this, I'll show you guys some of the clips I'm doing of when things look good. So let's kind of come down. My sweet William, really doing nicely. Got some California poppy, actually just about ready to bloom. Another wispy plant that seems to come back really nicely every year. I'm letting a lot of foliage die back because you wanna give the plant enough energy for the next season. So you'll see like um, daffodils and tulips and the muscari are all still soaking in the sun. And then we've got blooms coming in on my Coreopteris. And I'll see if I can show you. My generous gardener is putting in some bloom time. He's not being an aggressive grower yet, but sometimes that's how it goes. First season probably will stay small. Same with the one on that side. But then they will take off hopefully next year. And then I just put in here just some of the seedlings I had. So petunias and snapdragons. I, I had no idea what colors I was putting in the ground. So <laughs> some are purple, pink, red. They're all kinds of colors. And uh, design-wise, that might not always be the best choice. But you know what? It's a free plant. So I'm not even mad about it. Not sure if this, uh, da not daff, these dianthus, if they're going to even bloom because they're underneath the hibiscus because she spread way out. Again, just took up that entire area and is even crowding out my <laughs> rubicias as well. But you know what? I like it lush. I planted a delphinium bare root back here and I see no signs of growth. So I think that I did not plant it in time and it's probably not coming back or coming up at all. I never even got to have one season with it. We've got more petunia and snapdragon. My phlox is kind of, this is what it does. It kind of browns itself. I can clip this back and it'll grow all new down here. It'll be fine. It spreads out really nicely. You can start to see this small hollyhock. I have some all through this bed. So I'm excited to see how the hollyhock are gonna look this year. Oh, surprise feature. I didn't know I was gonna get this year was some gladiolus. I've got a few coming up right there. So that's cool. We'll see how that goes. I did put a foxglove in here and he does look like he's getting bigger. So let's see if we can get a better view of him. There he is. I hope he takes off. He's right there. 
So that'd be really cool if I can get him up and moving because I would love to see foxglove in this bed and delphinium. But uh, then we've got our iris just taking up space. My poppies put on a really pretty bloom this year and hopefully I'll shake those out into the garden and we'll spread them around. We'll see. I haven't had any luck with poppies, not this type anyway. So these ones I bought from a local greenhouse. Actually, the only poppies still in my yard are all from a greenhouse. I, not, none are coming up from seed except for the California poppies. And then of course my lavender is starting to bloom. She's a new addition as well. Another type of sedum and a couple more dahlia. This look good. I enjoy the view. It's a little bit of chaos. I know I realize now that's just my personality, a bit of chaos with the order, but I think in late summer, this is going to look really good. I think so. These ones I was considering putting in here, but I might move them to the back actually, because I really enjoy this color. So I think I'd like to see it in my back garden. So I gotta show you guys this. This my husband and me have similar but different ideas of what we like. He's been wanting to put some sort of pathway from here to here. We had some extra rock and he just did this without <laughs> permission. And he was excited to show me and he should have known better because that is not how you do it. <laughs> It's such a waste of rock. Um, he didn't prep anything. That's not how I would have done it. So I'm, I'm gonna trump him on this one and having him get it up because that's not, that's not how we do this here. We want a whimsy cottage garden, but this, this is not it. There's some more of my Dahlia. But guys, I'm not mad at him. I love that he, he wants to be a part of it. This is definitely my favorite view. Didn't I tell you guys we were gonna get rid of some of the obstruction to the view? See how nice that flows. So good. Uh, guys, I'm gonna show you, but uh, I have a clip of how tall these delphinium really are. They're about five foot. I'm five four, so. What I love about this area is all of the seed. I'm gonna clip in and show you here in a second, the seeded babies that I was not expecting to come back up. I haven't had them in the garden this year or last year, I don't think, and they made their way. But I will say, I'm really happy to see lots of foxglove babies. So I might move these around. I think they're a little too close to my outside but I'm getting them everywhere, which 
that's what you want. You want a self-seed foxglove and let it go to town. But this is just a lot of dieback from spring. So pretty. My bearded tongue is blooming. My Baptisia is blooming or was blooming. She did a great job this year, first year to bloom. My daisies. I am showing you guys. They were blooming for a couple of weeks. I'll put in that footage for you. Man, were they beautiful. And I have one little late bloomer. <laughs> and this is where I put a bunch of my dahlia to see if they just get moving. And I haven't really done anything down here besides what's kind of already in the bed. So to be rectified, maybe not this year, but that's okay. I know the brown just means that they're getting juice for the next year. I will tell you one thing that I'm battling. Mint in the garden. I did not plant this, guys, but I'm definitely working on pulling it because you don't want it coming up everywhere like mine is or this is. I won't even claim it because I don't want mint in the garden. Mint and creeper. Those are the two that are constantly being battled against. I actually saw some more mint. There it is. Try to get all the way down towards the root if I can and pull it. Otherwise, I'm going to just pull it all season long. That's no, all right. I'll grab it when it comes back up again. We saw a hummingbird earlier flying over here, so I put the hummingbird feeder there, hoping that I can get him to come in and stop by. He's all done for the season. Looking beautiful and huge, actually. I have some hollyhock back here, but I have a little tetra fever pew that has kind of set itself in the back there, which is cool. So got a little extra something, something. But we've got some hollyhock there. That hollyhock is getting nice and big. And some salvia. I was hoping for some foxglove in here, but it doesn't look like any seeded itself. So I might put one of those foxglove babies in here. My clematis, you guys will see in the video footage, bloomed really nicely this year. Beautiful. More hollyhock. Here's my new little delphinium. Oh, wait a minute. Let's see if I can show you guys. Oh, no, he went away. There was a little bee right there. Look at this delphinium. He's so cute and little. You know, I really enjoy these wispy plants guys little delicate baby plants for some reason I just really enjoy them and then of course my rose I'm going to show you guys some more footage here I'm excited to see how the hollyhock do and look at that spirea cotton candy with the bright bright fluorescent yellow and then super bright pink and not just the prettiest guys So just filling in the bottoms here, some labellia started from seed, and then just seeing what pops up.
What the fuck? So beautiful. My new bed, we're just kind of filling it in with stuff. So I think I've showed you guys the cat mint. I put in a few of the Snapdragon babies. Now this part might struggle because this is mostly compost. So it might be too much information for the plants. They may not do well here because if you notice how small these ones are compared to the garden up front. So if things suffer, I know why. But I bought a columbine. So I'm gonna try him out. I've tried one before I killed it. So hopefully this year I won't. A new sedum. Really pretty foliage on that. I like that a lot. But you see how discolored these petunias are? I think it's because they're in pretty much straight compost. But I got some snapdragons that are enjoying it. But the petunias do not seem like they like it. So we'll fertilize them. But if they fry, I know what's going on. It's just the soil. They're not, not enjoying it. I could actually move them. If I move them, then I know they'll do better. So... And then I have a little foxglove also. Looks a little bit like he's suffering. So maybe I need to buy some soil and just add a little bit more inert stuff around them to uh, give them a chance to thrive. More of my dahlia. Another dahlia. I have a lot. So pretty happy about that. Coming through this way, we put down some mulch for my rhododendrons. As you can see, my little impatience are filling in. My African, not African, my antique violets are doing really well. And like I said, I've taken out the bleeding hearts to give them room. But I do have Canterbury Bells. Isn't that a pretty flower? So pretty. And come back around. So restful. So I showed you guys I was trying to grow my macrophilia hydrangea and we've got one definitely putting on blooms. I'm excited. That one's not doing too bad. Might need some iron. Still deciding but I think this is the strip of where I will plant them for sure I think. This side doing really well. I think I told you guys I needed to move that astilbe and I did. <laughs> I'm impatient, guys. I can't help it. I was like, oh, yeah, in the fall. Nope. Like two days after that video. But he does not seem too upset about the move. You know, it's funny. I move him and then he looks twice as big. How's that work? But there's some more of my bleeding hearts. Pretty, guys. Oh. Still trying to use this to keep the weeds at bay because it's a little bit crazy. My back meadow, still very green. Still actually have like an iris in here blooming and my stilby starting to bloom again. I think I told you, put those way too close together. Beginning gardener mistake. I've got my daisies coming in. I've put so much seed in here, guys. It's so hard to tell if I've got any of the babies coming up yet. Honestly, I just have to have faith in God with what he's going to do with this space. Because <laughs> there's not a whole lot you can do about it. I dumped a bunch of seeds, so we'll see. Oh, there's my one little iris. I have lots of volunteer sunflowers in here. Oh, I don't know. He might be a seedling, but I don't know if he's a sunflower or something else. But I just look... <laughs> like a crazy person every day coming in and just checking for babies to see what's come up.
There's some sunflowers there. And I got a bunch of sunflowers right here. And then I've got my cosmos. I think got some Coryopteris right here. I'm pretty sure I just moved these today. I need to put some water, they might die. I think these are also Coryopteris. I don't think they're, uh, I don't think they're Cosmo, but I did dig him up. So he's a little bit struggle bus right now. Cause I wanted, this area was so bare looking. I wanted something to be added in. I might even try to move some of the sunflowers if this area is not gonna fill in. You know, I want a little bit of a uniformity to the chaos. Beautiful Cosmo. Some more Cosmo. I've got my, I believe these are Queen and Lace. They're weeds, but they have this really pretty frilly top. They're basically a carrot, um, but I let them grow because they're just wispy, just the way I like them. A little tiny petunia in the middle because I wasn't sure what it was when I first put it in. I believe I did put him in here. He's a foxglove, so we'll see if he takes off. That would be amazing. And something was kind of munching on my zinnia, but we are seeing potential blooms. Look something's eating it something's eating it so we'll see we'll see if I get any this year if, if things to eat it what can I do you know more Queens and lace Queens and lace Queens and lace <laughs> but you know what it fills in it has a pretty flower I'm not gonna fuss In that wide view. Once upon a time over here, I had planted some gladiolus and I have one popping through the soil I don't think there's enough sun in this area for that to bloom but you never know Call a paralyzed Vespian a still beast. <laughs> Come here, Luke.